I'm just so glad I'm going to be right back. I was here. Didn't take Mom. Mom, no. Okay. Well, you can do it. What's that? That's right. You can go on the forums. We'll put it in there. It's not a bad setup. Do you guys see the uh, the Facebook post? <laughs> yeah, we put one up today on uh, Dave made a little meme of moms. No, no. Always to the What's dark name? side. Okay. Just the things like you see on Facebook. It's just, gee, if I've known fabric. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Do you sell the shop? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Normal, regular size? Uh huh. There it is. So is it just on quilting deals. <laughs> no quilting deals. <laughs> Is that funny? I laughed out loud. Oh. She went back to get a bin of something. Hey, hey, Jean, does that link? Jean, Jean, does that link work? I I tried to post it on the forum on the last Skype delay thread. See if it works for you, or I can email it to you if that's easier. What's your email? Ed. Oh, we've emailed before. <laughs> Try that out and tell me if it works. We have three viewers. Aloha. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right.
seconds to 30 seconds. If you want to. <laughs> Lenny from the Netherlands wants to say hi. Hello. Is it just going to be sound only or pictures? No, they get this. <gasps> I think so. No. I can see me. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, it sounded like a movie. Oh, we might have our plumber guy. The plumber guy did come in. Look in the basement. Okay. All right. You get to run this car. What do we do? Yeah. Give me the whistle. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Sarah, would you care to join us? Mine's a little delayed, too. I look like I'm very slow. Or if you want to watch yourself. Or, here, it's good. Turn like that. Get the. Okay. So, so we were. The truants have to sit in back. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not giving the delay picture. I'm not giving the delay picture. I'm not giving the delay picture. For a long time, we were like that. Well, I figured everybody would. All right, so, so we're, we're broadcasting on, uh, on YouTube. And so uh, everybody on Facebook and on the forums is welcome to join. Gene, I think, pushed out um, the link so that everybody can get in there. And if they aren't able to get in there right now, we have 40 people viewing with us. Yay! <laughs> Everybody say hi! So we're, we're here in the new retreat center, and yeah. we're so excited that you all can join us. It's our, our forum reunion. Is, is this an annual thing? This is our first yeah. annual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> first week of 
Yes, yeah, going to be an annual. I just hope you get it booked. It's on the calendar. You guys get first dibs. It's on the calendar. Yeah, yeah. I would like to have an annual event for people who, like, like who was a D, had to back out at like the last minute or not quite the last minute. We all make choices. Yeah, yeah. It was either a car, you know, yeah. a car was either a car or you just never know. You can turn that toward you a little bit, and we can sit close together. No, I'm going to let you do. People like to see you, you know. That's what Catalina Moreno Restrepo says. Oh, that was such smart. great Spanish. <laughs> okay. So we have some questions coming in from Facebook and stuff, but I thought right now we could do just sort of a... A Q and A, just sort of a chat with Jenny, uh, that kind of thing. So you, I mean, what would be what would be fun for you guys, Jean? What are you thinking? Oh, I like the Q and A, but, but then we also want to make sure you have time to do your uh, hotel room. Yeah. I have time. Yeah. 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 I have time. I have time. Is that going to be on here? Is yes, that? Sure. Why not? Right? There we go. There we go. I can talk. You know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so to to start out, you want to can you talk a little bit about this retreat center and, and uh, like the the forum and all that stuff. You want to give us a little bit of background on that, and then we'll jump into some questions. You know they're going to want you to set up and carry it around. Well, that's yeah. what I was going to say. Can we walk around with the computer? Well, we. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> I have to be very careful. <laughs> I got my leg caught in a cord and broke my leg. <laughs> so we can't do that. We can't do that. Um, the retreat center is awesome. We've got these, uh, these. It's just very bright and airy. When we took all the old stuff out, we found all the tin ceilings, which we love, and we wanted to save the tin ceilings, and they did. They're just gorgeous. Can we just turn this up so they can see tin ceilings? Look at those ceilings. Aren't they gorgeous? <laughs> They've got them backlit with chandeliers and fans and the Oh yeah, we have a, and and so the walls are light blue and it's very airy. It has this awesome spa feel to it, and uh, the floor is this dark hickory. It's beautiful. The stairway you can see behind me is like a five foot stairway, and it just gentle curve <laughs> and nice climbing. Nobody dies climbing the stairs. And if you, and if you you know if you slip, Sarah wanted to make sure that they were carpeted so that nobody would you know hurt themselves and that sort of thing. Right behind me, um, you can see a counter. That's our kitchen. We have a full kitchen where you know uh, anything kitchenish can happen. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever kitchenish wants to happen in there uh, can happen there. And so that makes it really nice. We have two bathrooms, public bathrooms down here. The rest of the room that all goes that way out is all tables for sewing and um, and you know so loads of sewing tables. There's all the forum girls. Sarah, <laughs> and, Sarah. <on> the phone. <laughs> and, and Dad. <laughs> so that's everybody all over there, and uh, so lots of sewing area, lots of room upstairs. We got lots of sleeping, nice sleeping rooms, and um, everybody wants to take the mattresses home. Oh. <laughs> That's Sarah. Yeah, love the good mattresses. Shopper. <laughs> Everybody's like, what kind are they? We're like, we don't know. Oh, the towels are great, aren't they? The towels are so thick. I, I, I took them out of the driveway. I'm like, I'm now out of the dryer. I'm like, I want these towels. I love these towels. They're beautiful. So come visit. Come. Visit. Yes, please come and visit. It's uh, now available for um, booking, I guess, <laughs> yep. right? And uh, Jean, show them Jean over there. Turn that around so they can see Jean. There's Jean. There's Jean. Jean is the one who you'll talk to. She's she's actually going to do the booking and all that for the retreat center. So uh, um, we're very grateful for her at this point. <laughs> very very grateful. So let's let's jump in on a few questions. Sure, absolutely. Hey guys, got any questions? Yes. Yes, you know you're dating yourself. You know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I come upon you as a star, I do want to raise the idea of setting the scene. I want to know where that came from. Well, you know, there's there's a lot of things that happen in quilting that um, I think, you know, 
trying to run through the time and things like that. Uh, the question is about setting scenes. Where did that come from and how did that start? The answer is I just really don't know. But I can tell you, I because that was something I thought, well, why are we doing this, you know? And so, yeah, so I looked, I looked it up, and it actually, what it does is it helps the fabric relax. I mean, I'm sorry. So when you set your seam, you're, you sew a seam, and then you take your iron and you put it right on top of that seam like that and just iron a little bit. And what that does is it makes the thread relax and just kind of meld into the seam so it lays flatter. And then when you open it, it's also supposed to give it strength. So, um, you know, uh, it, it's just one of those things that's supposed to, supposed to work and be good. And um, I just try to do it because that's actually how I was taught. So we all get taught different ways, but we all know, you know, the bottom line is, is that if you don't set your seam, seam you're still going to have a fine seam and nobody's going to die. So, you know, I mean, it's one of those things that, um, you know, is kind of personal preference. So what do we have now? <laughs> you can tell. No, we don't want the quilt police. <laughs> so let's let's see. Susan Schaff uh, says she just placed an order for Minky Fabric yesterday. Ooh, Her first Minky. order with us and doesn't know what she's going to do with it yet. Any suggestions? Well, let me just tell you a little story about Minky. So we made this um, put. We had this big piece of Minky that we wanted to try, and we wanted to try using it on the back of the quilt and quilting it. So we actually um, put it on the back. It was red. The quilt was a lighter color, so we wondered, you know, what would happen, you know. So we quilted this, uh, it was like pretty much a girly quilt, you know, pinwheels and kind of cutesy fabric, and it had this red minky back. Well, Sarah's little guy happened to be uh, sick that day, and I said, Jason, look at this, it's so soft. I, you know, if you've never felt minky, I mean, it is like the most luxurious cuddling fabric you've ever seen. So um, we put it on it. I put it on the ground. I said, Jason, you don't feel good. Come lay on us. And he said, it's a girl quilt. You know what I mean? just didn't feel good. And I said, it's so soft, though. And so he lays on it. Well, that night he goes home. And of course, he doesn't feel good. So he has to take the quilt with him. And it's like a queen size quilt. Now, Minky, that's one thing to know about Minky is it's 60 inches wide. So if you sew two pieces of that together, you've got 120 inches. That's an enormous back, you know, with one seam. So now Jason, now Jason, he drags this queen size quilt with him everywhere. He doesn't care that it's a girl quilt. This is his quilt. Nobody's, <laughs> nobody's getting that from him. But it's fun to use on a back. I just re we just recently quilted one where somebody did. Remember the T quilt pattern where we cut the squares and set a different square inside that that tutorial. Um, one came in and it had been done all with Minky. The top had been done all with Minky using that pattern. And if I were going to quilt with Minky, I would do, make sure that it was a kind of a simpler cut because it has a, a, a one-way stretch. So when you, like even to quilt it, when you put it on, you want to make sure that you're, you're, it's not stretching this way, it's stretching this way. Yeah. Because otherwise it'll snap back and you'll end up with a, you know, it'll shorten up. So. You can mix it. I have seen a lot of baby quilts where they want the texture. You know, they'll throw a minky square in or a minky strip in or something like that. And so. Yes, with the rag quilt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And those are so easy. They're, yeah, they're beautifully. They're beautiful. Now, and oh, and the infinity scarves. Oh, my gosh. We did the infinity scarves. You know, it's like 12 or 13 inches. And you sew the tube and turn it inside out and just turn it a couple of times and tuck it inside each other and and sew down the seam and it makes a scarf that's so quick and everybody wants one. Yeah, they're so comfortable and they're so nice. It washes great. Now if you're worried about, um, because literally when you cut that stuff, if you're not, you know, the minute you cut it, it's like you're like a chia pet. You know, you're covered with all that fluff, you know. But if you throw your pieces in the dryer, the dryer will pick up most of those pieces of fluff and you won't have any. <laughs> your lid trap is just <laughs> <laughs> you want to You want to dump your lid trap a few times. That's true. <laughs> well, I have a question that I've always wanted to ask. When um, you do have uh, uh, square triangles, mm -hmm. the, I guess the traditional way has been to draw your line in half and, and sew down either side of that center line. And then you introduced us to the way that you do it where you so two squares together, mm -hmm. and then cut it apart in, in uh, quarters. And it makes a great half square triangle, but it's all bias edges. It's all so bias. So how, how do we manage our bias edges so that they don't I think you can do that. I, you know, you if you if you uh, so the here's the question. 
The question is, when you do half square triangles my way, they come out so that they're, all the edges are on the bias. So here's my feeling on the bias. And, um, and I think, and, I, and this comes from a clothing sewer. Um, you know, I started off as a garment sewer, and on a, in garment sewing, you love the bias. So I never learned, I never learned to, you know, hate the bias or die over the bias. It's just the bias. And so what we did was we, um, when this came out on the bias and people were concerned about it, it reminded me of the story of the woman who always cooked the roast like her mom, and she would cut that piece of the roast off because her mother always cut the piece of the roast mm -hmm. off. And she, you know, she put in this pan of finally She said one day, Mom, why do you do that? Why do you cut that piece off? And she said, because I only had this small pan, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I think with bias is the same way. I think, you know, a zillion years ago, somebody made um, sewed with a bias quilt had trouble, and bias got a bad name. I don't think bias should have a bad name. Number one, if you have two pieces of fabric and you're trying to put them together, you're not going to get them together. If they're not biased, you're not going to get them together to save your life, and you're going to end with a little pleat or something like that. If you have bias, you can you can make that fit, make it behave. Um, we're not dealing with big pieces of bias like this either. We're dealing with little tiny uh, uh, pieces. So if you have trouble with it, you can starch it. You can. A lot of times, the trouble comes in that we're pulling it through the, our sewing machine too. You know, if you just let it go through, you won't have any trouble with it. I don't have any trouble with it at all. Um, I'm the friend. Bias is my friend. So, <laughs> so it's really what what works best for you. What do we got, Al? What do we got? Any other questions? From the peanut gallery over here. <laughs> we got a little bit of a peanut gallery going on. We should say the question and answer the one we ran over time yesterday. So Amy, uh, Amy Clausen asks, uh, Jenny, how many quilt projects have you made and said this is not going to, or to a friend or family or even my worst enemy? She's currently working on a cathedral window runner and is ashamed <laughs> to show it. <laughs> I, uh, I actually have, I'm coming up with a really easy way to do the cathedral window, so I'm really excited about that and, you know, uh, can't wait to tutorial that. That's going to be really cool and you're going to love it. And you'll want to show that because it's easy. Um, I do have a few projects like that. Those are called um, UFOs. And interestingly enough, like I've gotten quilts to quilt that are old. You know, people bring in this stack of blocks. And I said, "Do you have you ever worked on a quilt?" You know, I'll say to the people who bring it in, "Have you ever worked on a quilt that you like put in a box and just put it somewhere?" And they're like, "Well, yes." And I said, "Well, I think our grandmothers did that too." <laughs> you know, <laughs> they'll find this box of blocks that their great grandmother made and they never finished. And I'm like, "Well, here's why she <laughs> she was terrified." You know, um, I have a couple that I've done. I actually have a cathedral window one that's done the real way, and um, it's still in a little baggie somewhere. <laughs> In my stuff, um, I actually um, I am not naturally organized. I, in case any of you didn't know that by looking at my studio, but I took a class once on um, organization, and one of the things they said to do was go home and get rid of everything you have that's unfinished. And I thought, um, and I I did that. I was just like I was just like oh my gosh. And I actually went through my stuff and I thought you know I'm really not ever going to finish this or this really isn't. Um, you know what I want to do anymore. You know, a lot of times we'll start something. You know, we made the school dolls in the '60s or something. something, and we're never going to do that again. And I got rid of a lot of those things, and I was so blown away at the weight that was lifted off me that I didn't even know was on because all of a sudden I didn't have all these things pressing on me that I had to do. So if I really know I'm not going to finish something, I pretty much um, I put it in, in, in a bag and I take it to our giveaway church in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> few of those projects that I'm going to finish, but mostly, you know, it's like, oh, there's so many awesome things out there that we want to do, you know, that. I just sell my There you go. <laughs> it'll, it'll come in a paper bag folded. <laughs> With a frowny face on it. <laughs> She says she's on the forum. Yeah, New York SCPA to be. Everybody says hi, Amy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Amy, Amy Schott is wondering what do you do with all of your YouTube or all the quilts that you make from your YouTube tutorials? Yeah, they're on the walls, and they're, we haven't got anything hung up here, but they'll come up in the retreat center. And 
Um, I asked Sarah one day, actually, I said, oh, I'm so glad we're going to do a tutorial on this because I want to put this on my bed. And Sarah goes, Mom, that will never go on your bed. And I'm like, really? And she, and she says, I said, why? And she goes, because these are magazine quilts. They're going in a vault. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, I said, we have a vault? <laughs> you know, and she goes, no, but I think we should get one. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> but anyway, those magazines, they'll, they'll probably hang. We were going to do quilts on beds in here, and then, and then we're all kind of germaphobes. So we realized that if they're on the beds, they'll, they'll have to be washed and washed and washed. Yeah. You know, because even, you know, we're all clean people, but, you know, we, they would, so Sarah, what we decided to do is do all white bedding. It can be run through the washer and bleached, and then, um, and then we'll do bed runners on the ends of the beds, and we'll do quilts on the walls. So, so that's, that, and that will save our quilts because it used to be that after we, after the line went out, you know, we would sell them, um, period, and periodically people will come in and say, do you have anything in here you can sell? I just really want a quilt, you know, and we'll look through and, you know, and, and periodically we'll do that, but not, not on a, not as a regular basis. It takes, if I've actually made it for a child um, and did a tutorial out of it, it, the fabric has to be completely gone before that quilt leaves the shop. So it takes them a while to get it, you know. And Katie is real. Or she'll make two because she's already made one and she has to show the Yes. See, that's the other thing. That's the other thing that happens. Whatever I tutorial, I have the finished quilt. Then I have parts, and then I have parts to the parts. So it creates a bit of UFO age, and um, and that sort of you know creates a. Boom. Yeah. There you go. You could do that. Yeah. Watch You know. Remember, I know we all have a hard time getting rid of fabric, and so really one time most. Probably, I would say probably 80% of my fabric was costuming fabric. And I thought, you know, well, I should give this to the guild. And I thought, it's costuming fabric, you know. And so I started going through my, ba my bags, and I had like six bags of stuff. But I was so embarrassed by how much <laughs> fabric I had that I really knew I would never use it again. You know, costuming fabric is completely different than quilting fabric. And I really knew how much of it I would never use. And I literally did. I was too embarrassed to give it to my guild. So I actually did take it to the church down here in, in the middle of the night. I had Ron take it because I'm like, this is terrible. Because we know how much that costs, you know. And, but you know you're not probably going to use it again in your lifetime. And you don't want... <laughs> <laughs> terrible. All right. Another question. Uh, let's see. PC mm, Batiks says she wants to know if all the forum ladies have emptied the shop. Of all the fabric. <laughs> So Sandy Novice came through shopping, and I just didn't think she'd spend enough money. But then she explained to me that she shopped every day, so I I gave her one for that. <laughs> no, they're having a great time. It's like a morning ritual over there. They are having a great time. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, the daily deals. I forgot about you guys could do that. <laughs> well, not, I was I was in here at 9:30, and I was like, "Oh, we're so tired. We won't even stay up for the day we do." I'll, I'll believe that when I see it. <laughs> All right, what's next? Let's see. Um, okay, so Deborah Spiner Spinar says, "I'm getting ready to do my first applique quilt. Is it better to stitch the pieces down as you go, or do you wait?" and then put them, lay them all down and do them at once. Generally, I work on an area. And so, um, so 
what I do is I, I kind of lay out that area, like if it's a block or, you know, that sort of thing, and I'll lay out that area, and I'll get things on so I know my placement. So, you know, you know, you don't end up with a flower over here when you wanted it in the center or whatever. So I, I do the placement, and then I will, um, anything that's, um, like, on the outsides, I kind of just take off and do that center portion so that I'm, I'm in the right place and do that. Um, and then I add the other things as I go. Now, if I'm going to do it in the car, then I pin it all on. But I pin it through the back. So my pins come up through the top and down through the back. And then I'm not catching a thread on them, and I'm not sticking myself when I, when I use them all the time. So that's, that's how I do it. Okay. <laughs> well, you guys Alan there. loved that answer. Could you tell? I can do some Apple thing now. You know, I don't. I, that's not something I've ever really learned to do. I'd actually love to take a class from somebody on paper piecing. Oh, okay. I do foundation piecing, but and it's probably close to the same thing. But when you see those little patterns that have one, two, three, A, B, C, four, five, six, you know, tiny little pieces, I'm like, I kind of like break out into a sweat, and you know, <laughs> the what now? Oh yeah. Was it really fun? Yeah, That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's not something I've done a lot of. I can't listen to him. She's a great gal. I know everybody says she's a great she's a great gal. I really enjoy her. Okay, just don't eat this one. That's a when you're gonna sell those quarter inch seams. I think you added a year or two. Uh, awesome. Instead, of, instead of drawing the line with the pencil, uh -huh. you just press the line. Don't you love that? I love that too. I am so thrilled you taught that. Thank you. Yeah, and it's most of those things come out of necessity because you know it used to be that I didn't sit down and start a project unless I knew I had time to finish it. Then I had one child and two and ten and twenty, thirty, forty children. You know, <laughs> and you can't. Then you, then I had to be like. I've got to sew, but I have to be grateful I can just sew one seam. So, you know, a lot of those things I, you know, happened because I didn't have a lot of time to do stuff and I was looking for ways to do things quicker. So, but, you know, it benefits all of us. We, we all get something done. And now, you know, of course, I have all the time in the world. I'm a lady of leisure. <laughs> If one of the questions was, when was the last time I actually got to sew on something of my personal stuff? <laughs> when was it? Uh, 1973. <laughs> <laughs> I was gone a lot. Yeah, these next few months I'm traveling crazy. Next year I won't travel near as much because of the retreat center. I'm going to be here more for the retreat right. center. So probably I'll only be gone maybe half a dozen times a month. Alan says he, Alan wants me just home. He misses me. He wants me home. Well, we have we have people that'll that'll drive all the way to come see mom, and, she's and then I'm not there. So that's so. Well, well, you know what I've asked for. You know, when Baby Lock sponsored me, they said, "Well, what do you want?" And I said, "Just one thing. I want my own cardboard cutout." Oh Eleanor can have one, and Nancy can have. I should have a cardboard cutout. It could be like this, so somebody could take a picture, you know, and they look like they're standing. I just want my own cutout. That's all I want. That's too far. That's no, that's too a little bit, a little bit thinner. And her head grew three sizes. That's true. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. That was Sarah. <laughs> once, once she got her own bathroom, she had to have a quill diva sign. So the worst was Bernice over here. She, she when, when all this started happening, you know, and, and everything started growing really fast, she brought me a crown to put on my head. So when my head got really big, I'd have something pretty to put on. <laughs> so I keep that crown to remind me. <laughs> I can't think. Tell me. Yeah, it's something about being a diva. <laughs> so now I have to, you know, I drink. I always put the one finger up. <laughs> so I can drink with my diva cup. <laughs> 
Diva mom, that's what it is. Uh-huh. When I'm walking back up down here, and I know I'm thinking of my head and trying to do the I'm at the corner of Davis, and for a split second, yeah. I thought it was Diva. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a three-year-old You're on the South Diva. You're like, oh, dang, she's got a sweet name. She's like, what's sweet name after? I don't know, she's got a sweet name after. That's so funny. Well, hey, you want to show your, uh, your wacky web and stuff real quick? Well, sure, sure. That's actually going to take a bit of time. That's so, fine. Right? I'm just going to set this running. Yeah. Oh, very cool. That's totally fine. Yes. The the flannel um, flannel is generally it's 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 generally one of those fabrics where if you buy any fabric you buy if it's good fabric it shouldn't need to be pre washed. Flannel is one of those things where you can feel it, you know, and sometimes you're like, I better pre-wash this. You know, it has kind of like a little coating on it. It will shrink at a bit of a faster rate because Minky is a totally polyester uh, fabric. You know, it, it's gonna, it's probably not going to shrink, but flannel will shrink a little more. But what that does, it's the same thing with the batting. The batting will shrink just a little bit, but to me it gives it, the minute you wash it, it gives it that real, that homey look. You know, it's, it, I just love the look of it because it, makes it look like it's just kind of a crinkle, yeah, uh, loved, you know, so that it's all loving. No. Nope. The only, the only thing you have to worry about when you quilt with Minky is if Minky is the back. If it's the back, you have to make sure that it's put on the machine correctly because it, all, it has a one-way stretch. So if you put it on wrong, it literally is going to snap back on itself. Um, so you just have to be careful of that. The other thing you have to be careful is it has a nap. So if you're putting two pieces together for the back, one uh, the nap is how the fur runs this way and it runs this way. And so it doesn't have a cow. No cow licks, just just a love. But it's really good. Backing, we've had a lighter coat of Brennan's back, and then we've had a lot of white. And so on top, and some of them you see. It would the needle would push it through. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it it can pop through because it's it's pieces, it's not a flat woven fabric, it's tiny little tiny little furs. Little hairs. Oh well, that's up to Al if he wants to share that. So, so here's what we're doing with uh, with we're, we're picking up some other buildings, and here's the here's the here's what's happening is we have so much stuff we can't fit it in our building anymore. <laughs> so we're we're picking up some other buildings, and we're going to have specific um, shops. So we'll have a Civil War shop. We'll have, uh, you know, several so a solids shop. There's several other ones that are floating around that, you know, like I have the ones I want, and Sarah has the ones she wants, you know, and and we're not sure, you know, what they're going to be. We have five five in mind that we're thinking. Yes. Yeah, so we're thinking it's going to be like a little Disneyland for quilters. You can go from shop to shop, and and it'll be different types of fabric. <laughs> well, I want yeah, I want I want one of those golf carts that has like four seats, you know, and a little Surrey thing, so I can just drive, you know. I have a plan. <laughs> we'll do Segway tours. Segway tours. <laughs> yep, yep. And I know Alan was really sad that he wasn't the first one in town to have a Segway. There's another. I'm still never reading. <laughs> they have Segway tours. When I just went to, I just got back from. Teaching uh, back east, and we stopped in Gettysburg on the way. And they had segway tours there, like a whole line of people. No, I want to sit. I don't want to stand and <laughs> tour. You know, that's an all-day tour. That's a well. I can't chew gum, and you know, I dance and sing. I can't do. What's a Henway? <laughs> <laughs> I fell for it. <laughs> anyway, these extra <laughs> these extra shops are going to be awesome because we'll be able to really concentrate on that type of fabric. You know, one of the ones I want to see. I don't know if I've told you this, but I think it'd be really cool to do a man shop. 
where we put all the sports fabric and the camo fabric and all the you know all that stuff you know because women always want to do yes and the and the beer fabric you know comic book fabric yeah I just think that that you know women are always looking for to make that one quilt for their husband so they can make thirty other ones for whatever they want you know as long as they keep their husband happy every once in a while you know. <laughs> Do you know, our original shop used to be called Man's Land, and it was a man's clothing store, and then my studio was a barber shop. And if that isn't the best marketing, you know, for the day, I mean, that's awesome marketing. And so we, our whole original plan was the back corner was going to be Man's Land. We were going to call it Man's Land after that first, that original shop. And, um, and uh, we just had too much fabric. You know, we figured it was, fabric was more important than men. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not really, not really. But you know, that, but, but there you go. The husbands pay for it. Yes, we got it. We got to love them up. Got to love them up. Yeah. We do have. A, there's a lot of guy quilters out there. Yeah. But the guy quilters are shopping with you guys. They're not. They don't want to sit in there and watch a game. You know, they're in. They're right in there with everybody shopping. We went to the shop this past weekend, and there was one man quilter that I had met in one of our shops, and he was there with his book building. Yeah, all of us myself. He hauled us around the whole Isn't that wonderful? Oh. Uh, yeah, they're very good. Very good. One of the uh, buildings where I'm at is a male who is public. He's got one book out already. Wonderful. Bonds and Porter's magazine wow. recently. They're very detail oriented, so they're very good at any little thing. Men are generally men are. That's like that's like my husband. He's he's a machinist, so it's you know it's all measured in calipers and you know mm -hmm. little tiny bits. And he's very detail oriented. And so the kids one day they're like, "Well, Dad, you're fixing that machine. You could probably run that machine." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he actually does a really good job. And he one one day this is actually kind of an interesting story. One day um, we've been married for 35 years, and he woke up and he had an opinion which hadn't <laughs> happened before. <laughs> You know, and he says, he says to me, could we not have something brighter on our bed? And I was like, really? You noticed our bedding? You know, I mean, I had no idea. He never said a word about it. So I let him pick the next colors, and he picked reds and beiges, and it was gorgeous. So now I'm like, okay, you're on that now. You can, <laughs> you can pick the fabric forever. They're generally very, very good at that. Um, there you go. <laughs> I'll get another one. You what now? Well, my boys are a little embarrassed at how much they know about fabric, actually. <laughs> I, a gal walked into church one time, and I recognized her dress. I was like, oh, that's Dream On there. <laughs> and then he's like, oh, somebody tell me I'm a man. <laughs> he's like, not only do I know the line, I know the designer, and I know the company. <laughs> yeah. I love your dress. <laughs> Yeah. Dream yeah. There you go. <laughs> Probably that could be. Well, let me just show you here what I got. I have this book came to my studio. Sarah, can you help me hold this? This is an old antique quilt. And it came to my studio. And this is this is the quilt that we originally um, made the periwinkle out of. Natalie was actually sitting looking at this, and she's she's like, oh my gosh, do you know what this is, you know? And she had, Natalie had made at the time a, um, a quilt, a, a tablet for this spider web quilt right here. And so she realized that this little centerpiece right here, this little shape was the same shape that her knee. We realized that we would be able to do both things. She did this one for the spider web. So I just wanted to show you how to do that. This was originally the first, this is the, with the spider web template, this was the periwinkle quilt that we made with that same template. So the spider web has the colors that come off the sides. The periwinkle has the colors in the middle, and the whites are on the sides. And so originally that first template we made for the um, for the spiderweb quilt, and uh, and it had a little bit different tip on the bottom of it. 
So we showed people how to fix that and how to use it so it would work for the periwinkle. And then we just finally said, we'll just, we'll just you know. You guys remember this. Yeah. Yeah, it was, so, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a bit long. Drama. Yeah. Yes, it was a bit of drama. So we actually just, you know, uh, kind of redid the template so that it worked. Now it'll work both ways. But, um, so then what we did was, here's the little one. So then we came out with this tiny one. Oh, the tiny oh, one. Oh, okay. The tiny one works, um, and it's just like the antique wheel. The tiny one works. The mini star wrap. I'll just show this real close here. Here's the tiny. And it works on um, for to make a little periwinkle quilt. And what I do when I very first get a template is I, I sew it together without taking a lot of precaution. Because I want to see how much work it's going to be, how much it's going to do. So I put together these little squares like this with the little one. Now Alan, of course, looked at it and the first thing he said was, Mom, could you not have been a little more careful about how your go together? <laughs> and I was like, the first one I do, I just kind of sew it together. But even just sewing it together, it doesn't do too bad. You know, it's not it's not too bad, and it has that same look like the, the big antique quilt, you know, it's just cute. So here's what we thought when we did this. We have the, we have the paper like this. <laughs> Let me unwrinkle it from my bag. So we have the paper, and we have this center piece right here. This is on the spider web. And then we're going to put our strips out from here and build out these sides. On the periwinkle one, we have, we put this in the center. We put this in the center right here, the color part. And then we put white pieces on the sides, just one big piece to cover this. Then you flip it over and trim it off to match the triangle so that it makes your block. So here's our block right here. And they're all trimmed out, and this makes the periwinkle. Go it right here, and I have one. You put four of those together, and it's going to make this right here. And then that's the block for the periwinkle. Here's your, here's your individual block. And um, how we fixed it on the old one right here, I wanted to show you. You would just come in, you just pull that in from the edge on the bottom. But now the new template that's come out with it completely redundant template, so it works for everybody. And now it gives you plenty of room for that line. But see, on the side of it, that didn't matter. It was just when you looked at it, you might do the same thing, you know, with the three. So um, then you have it all fixed now, so it works, <coughs> and, uh, and it's awesome. So that actually was my little demonstration. There we have the two different size templates like this. This is the and tell, tell them that that little bitty one fits on those mini charm patches. The little bitty, bitty one fits on the candies. Yes. You can get four of these out of one charm square. Uh, you can also get many, many of them out of a jelly roll strip. They yeah. fit on a jelly roll strip as well. So they're, they're very cool and, and very quickly, you know, you can get lots and lots of these. This is not dark. It's it is. Dark. Dark. I mean, the first thing I like. I'm like, oh, oh that would make a great Mickey so quilt. You gotta put it on your baby brain. Uh, this isn't quite my charm pack. A lot of times when I try to. It is a mini. Oh, yes. Yes, no, this is a mini charm pack. So the minis, um, let's see, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, sixteen. So this is two of the candies. So it isn't quite, it isn't quite one, it's not one whole big five inch one, it's two candies. Okay. So, uh, I mean, it's 30 so candies makes a queen. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's <laughs> 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 That's <laughs> That's <laughs> scary. That's 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 scary. Let me see if I can find a better example. See, well, like right here. See, they're just a hair off, and I just sewed them so quickly, and um, you know, it just. I'll let you guys look at that, and it really. Looks see, what's it's what's it's what's it's quilted. That's right. <laughs> and the other, the other rule is they crinkle up. It, it, it's yes. not gonna, you're not gonna see it. No, anymore. and it, you know, on a galloping horse, right? You know, looks great on a galloping horse. <laughs> <laughs> So what else, Al? Do we have anything else? Any other questions or anything? I think that's it. We'll uh, we'll try and do this again, maybe before we 
before we get out of here. Good show. Thanks for All coming. right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Oh, yeah. Turn it around. There you go. Bye. Bye.